welcome to the Calpar Bros Podcast. I'm your host, Terrence, and with me is my co-host, Jason, calling in from the back cave in Indianapolis. Jason, how are you, my good man? Hey, you know what it is, bro? It's that time of week again. It's time for the CPBs to do our thing, to talk about stuff. Stuff of the news, stuff that's going on in sports, entertainment, what have you. That's how we do it, bro. But still, all real, feeling pretty good. Good to talk to you again. Loving those headphones you got. Keeping it black. But uh, <laughs> but hey, man, let's, let's get into it. My God. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thank you for listening. This is episode 64 of the Cal Park Bros podcast. For the uninitiated, Cal Park Bros is the podcast to hear. We are a weekly podcast for fans of sports, current events, and entertainment. And as always, we are your hosts, Terrence and Jason. And every single Thursday, we come to you with a brand new episode where we discuss the current events of the day, sports, and the athletes we love. And even some of the athletes we loathe. No matter the topic, you can expect a brutally honest and fun exchange of snark while learning through the lens of our 30 years of friendship that originated in Calumet Park, Illinois. And folks, for more Cal Park Bros content, make sure you connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok under the handle Cal Park Bros or Cal Park Bros Podcast for more behind the scenes of the show and just to engage with us every single day. But do not forget that the Cal Park Bros Podcast is available to listen and subscribe for free wherever you, yes, you, you there, listen to podcasts. Like us, love us, share us, follow us. And folks, if you like us, hell, why wouldn't you? That's right, folks. Like Terrence said earlier, we are the podcast you hear and watch. Just so make sure you're living it, loving it, and doing it. All right. Um, first segment, we, we will not be stepping in the name of love anytime soon, Mr. Ross, because R. Kelly has been appropriately sentenced. Um, just referencing us, NBC uh, news article. Um, R. Kelly was sentenced Wednesday to 30 years in prison months after he was convicted of, on all nine counts in a high profile sex trafficking case. Um, U.S. District Judge Ann Donnelly handed down the sentence in Brooklyn, New York, after several of Kelly's victims angrily addressed him at the hearing. The judge is quoted, you were a person who had great advantages, worldwide fame and celebrity and untold money, she said. You took advantage of their hopes and dreams, holding teenagers in your house trapped. You were at the top of your organization and you raped and beat them, separated them from their families and forced them to do unspeakable things. Um, there is one um, victim who is quoted, you degraded me, humiliated me and broke my spirit. I wished I would die because of how you degraded me. I mean, I don't even know if I want to go any further because I feel like there's definitely been the stark contrast in the way we talk about R. Kelly. And maybe it's because of the show, The Boondocks, that actually famously went at uh, pretty much Black America's uh, obsession with R. Kelly. Um, and even in the face of damning evidence, just couldn't stop themselves from celebrating him. Oh, and The Chappelle Show, for that matter, since this is all about pop culture. And yes, this is these are these are heinous, n not allegations, not charges, legitimate convictions. Um, and now you have a legitimate justice result. Like this, Jason, this was, you know, there were whispers years ago. And I don't even know how you can say it's whispers. The guy literally was the black Jerry Lee Lewis. What the hell? Jerry Lewis, for those of you scoring at home, uh, I believe not only dated, but wed an underage woman. I'm sorry, underage girl. Let me correct myself. So if you're underage, you ain't a woman, you're a girl. So the signs were there. <laughs> you didn't have whispers. You had a damn shout shouting match. So... This, a lot of people are looking at this as just desserts. I mean, hell, him, Bill Cosby, hell, a lot of a lot of the uh, Mount Rushmore of, of black culture is taking the L in 2022. Jump in, Jason, anytime you want, dog, because I'm like, I'm 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 almost like relieved. I'm like, finally. Well, you're saying finally. I'm sure his victims are saying the exact same thing. Um, 
Matter of fact, one of your one of the the victims you started reading from alluded to that a little further down in the article. She says, "You are an abuser, shameless, disgusting." She added, "I hope you go to jail for the rest of your life. I feel sorry for you." But, but she also mentioned later on relief because she mentioned specifically, "I, I know there are fans of R. Kelly who don't believe us," said the woman who was 17 when she first met Kelly at a concert in September of 94. That first part of that goes into what you're saying that was joked about on the Dave Chappelle show, the, the whole Dave Chappelle being a witness or a jury selection person at um, the R. Kelly trial and say what, he, what would have to happen for him to be able to convict R. Kelly. It was all sorts of ridiculous things that had to take place on, you know, for he would actually believe the story of the, of the victims. Like you said, multiply that by the thousands, tens of thousands, if not millions of black black people, or I don't want to put on black people, just period, people, period, that chose to not believe victims because of the star power and somewhat the legend of R. Kelly from the music game. Now, I don't know if it's because of the, of the Me Too movement that arose some years ago, that maybe you started even people looking at serious eyes on this stuff. But like you said, the rumors have been there, and you you said whispers and kind of kind of backed off of that a little bit. But really, there were whispers because there's nothing really factual. It goes back to when Aaliyah broke out in the music game, and the, the rumors were there at that point. So I think at that point she was only 15, and the rumors were there at that point. You know, hey, what's R. Kelly doing? The rumors are there that we're hearing about this, that, or the other. And I don't think any of that was ever proven to be true or anything, but the rumors were there. Unfortunately, God rest her soul, she's not with us anymore. Otherwise, I'm sure she would weigh in on this situation for sure. Um, but like you said, he, he got his day in court in New York because he has another thing coming up uh, next month in Chicago for other stuff as well. So he had he got his day in court. He got 30 years. What What I found extremely interesting, and I know this is part of their job, but his lawyers were fighting for him to only get 10 years or less. And I'm thinking, again, I know that's your job, but on what earth do you actually think that, that that's going to actually happen? That's what I thought. But then I think back, well, the fact of the matter is he does have that fame, that clout, we'll say, in the, in the pub, public eye. He has that money. And we've all seen in history a lot of celebrities who probably were able to use that to their advantage to get lighter sentences in in the in the conviction or not get convicted at all or just get probation or house arrest or whatever it may be. So the fact that they went heavy and he got even more years than what the prosecution was even looking for, they were only looking for 25, he got 30. So I think the thing mentioned six victims, you know, came out in court. I think that 30 years, I know we're not legal experts here, but I think that 30 years isn't a bad way to go. If you got more, hey, great. Which, again, he may get more for the Chicago stuff. I don't know how that's going to play out, but we'll see. Those are kind of my initial thoughts. What else you got to add, man? Because we could talk about this a lot more. I got some other stuff to, 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 to go into, but that's really more so after the fact now, now that he's been convicted and locked up. What do you what do you think? Well one, well, one, how crazy is it that we have to say, well, this is the Chicago stuff and this is the New York stuff. I'm like, dog, 12 play is not that good. I believe I can fly is not that good. You realize how fucking delusional you need to be to believe that all of those people, all of these women, made it up. I mean, it's it's a it's a done deal, thank God. But I think the older I get, the more at peace I am with not listen listening to that catalog, because. I'm going to ask you a question. Did it strike you as odd when you when we were much younger and we heard about R. Kelly being married to Leah? Like, did that did that strike you as normal? Well, see, I, before I answer that direct question, I was going to say that's probably what. All, I mean, other than the Me Too movement, that may be what changed people's opinions about this. Because back when R. Kelly was popular, popular, most of the people listening to him were around our age. You know, you and I, which we were teenagers at the, at the time as well, maybe young 20s. Now that we are older and more mature, we realize that, hey, we, and also that we probably have a better understanding about the situation. It's not really anything to really joke about. 
or it's something to take seriously. And I kind of feel like when you're a teenager, well, from the outside perspective of a teenager, you can't really fully grasp that concept. Now, obviously, those teenagers who were dealing with that with R. Kelly, they, they definitely could grasp it, but obviously we couldn't. So I guess I mean, to answer your, your d- direct question, then looking back on it, yeah, it, it does seem pretty odd that that it wasn't believed more. The, the whispers weren't, you know, taken more seriously. I know there was a trial a, a number of years ago that he wasn't convicted on of anything. I, I want to say it was 08. Um, um, and I don't know if some of that still was playing around because I was back really still in the, the height of his popularity with the, with the music and whatnot. So maybe that played a difference. With that situation, whereas now, now that he's not as much in the public eye anymore with musically compared to 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and again, obviously the Me Too stuff, and people again waking up, those 20 year olds, those teenagers who are now, you know, 40 plus like me and you, it's like, oh, like you said, Bill Cosby, Epstein, another person we're going to talk about later. Maybe we should start looking at all, all, all this other stuff. And not to mention, like you said, over the course of years he's been doing this. Eventually, it's going to come back and catch you. Like you said, if if so many people start to come out of the woodworks, we'll say, for lack of a better better phrase, and say, hey, he did this. It's not just one person anymore. Now it's two. Now it's four. Now it's six. Now whatever the number is. And as time happens, it's like, oh, okay, maybe we just need to start throwing, like you said, R. Kelly in this mix with everybody else. And here's where we are. Not to mention all the co-conspirators potentially as well that helped you do this stuff also going to start coming forward out of their own probably guilt or want to stay out of jail, one of the two. Because apparently there are people, according to this article and several others, there are all people all sorts of in a circle that would, for lack of a better word, lure these women into his world, we'll say, when it comes to locking them in the bathroom, locking them in the hotel room, locking them in the recording studio. Making making them call him daddy, all this other stuff. So it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Yeah. I just I'll I'll leave with that. And I I'm glad you mentioned this this is not just one one guy's downfall. This is not one musician's downfall. The judge literally mentions organization. That is a mm-hmm. that is a that is a crew of people that are either A about to about to snitch. Um, and I mean that in a meaningful, positive way, because somebody needs to go down for this shit. Why shouldn't it be him? But also means this, this you're not talking about some random dude operating on his own. This 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 is like the Weinstein level of a treachery, okay? Well, we're gonna get into that, folks. All right, like to me, the, the, it's that level. The millions ain't got to match up. It's to me, it's very similar because you don't operate with that sort of um level of feeling like you're never ever going to pay for this unless you have an entire organization. So, I have a question for you. So, so there are a few things that came out in me reading all this stuff uh, over the last few days or so. That one, it was mentioned in the article that again, a couple of things I, I didn't know about that apparently he was molested and abused himself as a kid. Now the judge, she said in her sentencing, took that into account supposedly. I, I kind of wonder how true that actually is. But keeping that in mind, she also did mention that it's not an excuse. And I, I would agree, it's not because I know other people who've been abused and they're not doing this this stuff. With that in mind. Do you feel like that situation with, with him that happened with him as a kid being abused by relatives, by the way, a sister apparently included in that? Do you think that is a reason to give him a lighter sentence than what he probably could have gotten? Again, keep in mind, he got more than what the prosecution was asking for. But do you feel like, based off of that, is that a reason to give him less or should he have gotten more? I don't I don't. Jason, I don't even think that it should be used as a as a modifier for less time or more time. The the victims are who they are. The victims had their say. Um, Robert Kelly is fifty five fucking years old. Okay, so he's had 
far more time than any of his victims to grow from the things that hurt him as a, as a child. And so, yeah, it, any sort of reasonable moral statute of limitations, we are well past the point of, well, this happened in my childhood. I'm like, dog, you are not a child. They were. Thank you for coming to my Terrence talk. Another thing I kind of wonder, too, after reading a few things is that apparently falsely, according to his lawsuit that he's tried to sue against the, the, the housing facility, that he was put on suicide watch after, you know, the sentencing or whatnot. The house, you said, Jason, you said yeah, housing facility. Is, is that like, is that like the correctional facility you mean? Yeah. Thank you. I couldn't find the word. Sorry. Correct. Yeah, okay. That sorry. makes sense then. No, you're thank good. You. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. So, so he put him on suicide watch because he fit the description, even though he claims that he wasn't feeling suicidal, which, again, you know, may or may not be true. I guess we'll find out. Again, not advocating for anything to happen, be it, be it suicide or homicide when he's in prison. But that kind of also makes me wonder, based on our conversation about how people feel, felt about R. Kelly back in the day, also we know the reputation of anybody going into prison for hurting ki- uh, minors and children it's usually not a good thing to do that, especially on the male side of things. Yeah. On, I, as far as male prison. So, but what I'm saying is I, I kind of wonder how that's going to play out when it comes to that's that, that reputation of that versus, well, this is R. Kelly. You know what I mean? I guess we'll find out if he, he's there for 30 years. Like I said, typically he'll be 85 if, if he serves all 30, which typically people don't last that long in jail at, at, at that advanced age, but we'll see. But I was, always, I was just kind of curious about that. Again, not that it really matters, but I'm just very curious about what's going to play out with that. Is that reputation going to take over or is R. Kelly reputation and his money, is that going to be kind of what, you know, stands for his uh, status and life, <laughs> probably appropriately life in, in prison? Yeah. Uh, you mentioned money. Shit. I don't know how much he's got left after all, all, all these damn charges. Well, and, and whatever he, the last 30 years, but yeah. And, and whatever, and what, listen, whatever he has, yeah, there should be a, an accounting to, um, making these victims whole. So I didn't see anything mentioned about fines, which I mean, there could be at some point, if not this trial, maybe the Chicago one. Uh, I didn't see anything mentioned. However, as we all know, it's very possible that after the fact, civil trials and things like that, these women mentioned that they were you know, traumatized since then, which I get that. So if they haven't mentioned anything yet, this could be grounds for that after the, after the fact. So, um, yeah, we'll see. All right. That concludes our first segment on um, the R. Kelly sentencing. Coming up next, we're going to be talking about uh, the Chicago police being no longer able to chase people on foot. Coming up next on Cal Prep Rose.